And, you, and of course, it's Friday night, so you're going to see traffic. And, you know, remember with um, Imperial Highway, it sort of does go into city streets as well. It looks like they're right next to um, that's LAX. LAX, right there yes, on the right-hand side, Imperial. heading to the beach. That's right. Yeah, so they're on Imperial West, actually. If they were on the 105 West, they went on right over to um, Imperial, and they're going to, like, tee right at uh, Doc Weiler Beach if they end up staying straight. And then that's when, Giovanna, they'll decide, do they want to go right to Playa Vista or left towards Manhattan Beach? That's right. He's coming up on Vista Del Mar. Uh, now he's slowing down. He was driving much faster a little bit ago when we first uh, came up on him on the freeway. But, uh, yeah, we'll see here which direction he takes if he goes towards Playa Del Mar or into Manhattan Beach. Either way, the streets are narrow. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of people out on this Friday night. Lots of traffic. People, this is a time when people are heading home. Uh, and he goes, le or is he going straight? He's going right across. Oh, no, that, uh, that was Pershing. Did I, he take a ride on no, Pershing? He no, he didn't. I believe he went straight towards Doc Weiler. Uh, did we lose him? He, he went straight. So he would, have been he would be going to the left. The helicopter, oh, maybe he made a U-turn. Looks like he, he made, made a U-turn. It looks like he made a U-turn. I'm kind of relieved, actually. I'm hoping that, uh, but and we know that this person is very dangerous, Giovanna. You just said earlier that uh, he hit another car um, at 95th in Vermont. Right. And, and that now, person, okay. boy, really getting very close. But that person needs uh, an ambulance. Okay. So it looks like he's probably going to get back on the 105 East. Um, if he continues to go the way he's going and the speeds that he's that he's doing, he's going to get on that freeway very quickly. Hopefully he gets on the freeway. I mean, hope, either I know, way, right? it's going to be dangerous, but he could also uh, turn right and get on to uh, Sepulveda, or, which is now PCH, and head again south. But it does look like he is coming on to... Um, the 105. Yeah, yep, right yep. there. Well, you see the sign there. Yeah. So he's heading east on the 105 and not slowing down. And again, you mentioned it. He's a shooting suspect. He's already hit another vehicle. There's already been an injury. This only started 10 minutes ago. Yeah. Uh, you know, we don't know following. the situation of the shooting suspect of what of the crime. We just know that this uh, driver is wanted in connection with some some sort of shooting. I was looking at it because that right everybody merges on right there and this person's going to have the opportunity to either take the 405 um, on the right hand side which is the, you know he's driving on the shoulder right now um, again and you can see his speeds there a moment so ago if these fast. speeds are accurate he was going like 130 miles an hour uh, slowed down and now you see him speeding up again winding in and out of lanes um, I'm not seeing patrol vehicles behind him I wonder where the LAPD is, um, did, did they decide to pull back? Or, can you see them? I'm not no, seeing them No, I can't see them, here. Javonna, and you're absolutely right. They may have decided to kind of start just tracking this person because uh, they are going, they're driving so dangerously right now. And, of course, like we just said, it's Friday night. A lot of people are on the roads. This is the area that tends to not see a huge amount of traffic, but... Uh, I know that you can see this. You can see police behind there. You saw several uh, police vehicles behind in the pursuit, and we know that um, the CHP has been alerted. I'm sure um, at some point it'll, we'll be able to figure out if the CHP is going to take over this. Yes, we're told that they have been alerted, um, or if and the so LAPD will be assisting. Yeah. yeah, I think the LAPD is still uh, following, although we don't see him. And now we see him exiting. This could be the 110. Is this the, the fast carpool lane? Yeah, it's going to be the fast carpool yeah, lane. Yeah. But um, and but now the, you see the backup yeah. that is typical for a Friday night. I'm a, uh, yeah. They're and gonna now he's going to find himself a l oof. in a difficult situation here. He's going to be maybe yeah. he's looking for an off ramp. There. I would like this person to stay on the freeway. I I think this one this person is so dangerous to get onto surface streets. I'm sure the LAPD is trying to figure out how how to cut them off at the pass, but when you when somebody's making unpredictable moves, you, it's very hard to kind of distinguish what they're doing and where they're going to go. Um, but again... And so did he stay? You know, he came off yeah, of the freeway. Um, yeah, he's definitely getting off. What, what off-ramp is this? Uh, hard to see. Oh, this might be the 10... Is this, is this the 110? No. No, no, no. They're on West, this is West 113th Street. And again, more traffic. I mean, it is a Friday night. It's There's going to be yeah. traffic everywhere. It is still in, in, in the middle of uh, the commute home. So this is 
wherever he ends up, it's going to be packed. Lots of people on the road, pedestrians on the road. This is on, he's approaching Prairie, South Prairie. Uh, did he make a right turn? He's southbound on Prairie now. And Giovanna, we have Bruce Thomas, who's joining us, law enforcement expert who has had many, many, many years and lots of experience with pursuits. And he's been with us for so many years as well. Bruce, thank you so much for joining us. You know, it's been a busy night. We were just saying, what's going on? But again, it's Friday night. It's sunny. The weather's been good. Now, of course, we've had two pursuits in a matter of a half hour. Um, this one's very different than the last one. This one's very scary to watch this driver. Yeah, the speeds of this pursuit are definitely a lot higher than the other one. We are chasing, or I believe the LAPD may be in the tracking mode of a shooting suspect, which is a felony crime. Yeah, and then how does that how does that you know play a, play a part in um, law enforcement's response because they know that this person could be armed and dangerous. Yeah, well, that will, the armed and dangerous part will come into play at the end of the pursuit or the pursuit terminus. However, what we would be concerned about now is the reckless endangerment that this driver is driving, the speeds and the maneuvers that he is doing to evade law enforcement. Yeah, and to your point, Bruce, he's uh, driving against traffic oh. at very high speeds, Jeez. very unsafe uh, maneuvers here. He's approaching Crenshaw. This is Imperial and Crenshaw. Again, driving against traffic, um, going through the intersection, and now we see the LAPD following uh, close behind. Um, uh, really scary at this time of day with, with so many vehicles on the road, people trying to get home. Yeah, we are in the heart of rush hour, so the traffic conditions are going to be heavy, and he is going to be boxed in on certain streets. Um, however, he is now on the wrong side of the road. Oh, well, he, d he now just he's back on the right on a, side of the road. On, yeah, he just still, got back on the right side. But still not driving any more safe. Um, uh, still winding from lane to lane, and and then and then I wanted to ask you the the accident he had. You probably don't have any information on this at 95th in Vermont, and someone was injured. That pl plays a factor, correct, in how um, authorities respond to him. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, I mean, so you have now a a pursuit that has caused one accident. Hopefully, they're not injured at all. But he's not driving safely at all and in and out of the lanes of traffic. Yeah, and Bruce, you know, we know that the LAPD has really been taking a different stance, it seems like, in the last few years by uh, calling off pursuits, letting the, the suspect kind of get away or go into tracking mode. The, being that this is a shooting suspect, what are the chances that they will let this one go into surveillance mode or something because this is very, very dangerous. I mean, he's... Uh, yeah, we see now he's on the wrong side of the road at a high rate of speed. Um, there are factors which the watch commander is calling for. Uh, the road conditions, the crime, how many, speed, how many uh, suspects in the vehicle, road conditions, speed, all those are factors that play into it. You are chasing a felony suspect. So, you know, it just becomes a very dangerous position for not only the public, but also the officers. Oh, for sure. It's, and he's now on uh, Southwestern Avenue. He made a left on uh, Imperial, I believe. And mm -hmm. so he is now heading uh, south. There's a fewer, fewer cars on this. Uh, well, maybe I spoke to yeah, you see saying. the traffic there, but he was boxed in while you were talking, uh, Bruce and Colleen he was boxed in pretty good. And he still found his way um, out. He's determined to get away. Yeah, and our director is saying that this uh, driver looks like they are heading back over to the LAX area. So again, we're going to, the airspace is very protected in this area. So we will um, have to probably maneuver uh, Air 7 HD to um, obviously abide by any FAA rules that uh, prohibit airspace um, in yeah. this area. You know, to, to your case, I'm sorry, to your case in point earlier, um, there was a study done a couple of years ago about pursuits, and unfortunately, um, LAPD was one of the lead agencies that had third-party traffic collisions, meaning because they were chasing somebody, there were accidents and injuries that took place. So they have taken a different stance. Yeah, it looks like we might have lost him. Uh, he was west on Century, and now we don't see him. We're looking at Vaness. Avenue now. Uh, I'm not sure if we can um, find him again, but again, he was west. He was heading west on Century, and uh, we don't see him at the moment. 
Every um, now and then we do lose them, but I'm sure the LAPD and I'm sure the well, LAPD there, there's helicopter a vehicle hasn't. Right there, uh, they're pulling away. The helicopter should actually pull in. There he is. There's the LAPD, so we can hope the vehicle is in front of that LAPD vehicle with the lights flashing. Oof. Don't get dizzy. Um, but yes, it, again, we are going to, they are staying on this. And at least people there are hearing is. the there flashing lights, uh, hearing the sirens and seeing the fa flashing lights because this is so dangerous for anybody who's out and about. And, and Bruce, uh, to your point about that data you brought up, so, so at, what, at what point do they call this off? You know, when it just gets too dangerous, when the speeds are excessive on a roadway, 20 plus miles an hour on a city street, um, you know, that is the kind of point that everybody looks at, especially the watch commander and the supervisors in the pursuit who say, you know what, this is not worth this. Uh, hopefully we have a license plate. Hopefully we have some suspect information that maybe we can uh, take them into custody at a later time in a very safe manner. Yeah, that, that would seem um, like a very logical uh, thought process because right now this person is obviously very desperate, but are they in, they they're are in a parking, parking lot, lot, which is, uh, that's... This is Old Navy parking lot. There's a red lobster there. This can be very dangerous too if he decides to run into one of these businesses. Um, hopefully he just drives through and keeps going. There's Ooh, traffic there. Exactly. But keeping he, him from getting away, but now he's, you know... Figure out a, can. Yeah, can you, I just feel for all these people who are in their cars and families, it's just, it's so nerve wracking to see, to see something like this just come right up upon you from behind. But they look like they're gonna, nope, I was gonna say, it looks like they may have boxed him in, but he sort of maneuvered around. Yeah, there appears to be traffic on the other side, but somehow he's... Uh, he's wiggled through it. Yeah, he I'm, continues to do that. Um, so we've lost sight of him, but we can assume he's beyond that building, uh, stuck in that traffic there. Yeah. Uh, and there he goes. And between vehicles, between lanes. How you can, sometimes I, I just marvel at how uh, these pursuit suspects can almost make a third lane when there wasn't one. And it's, you know, people get nervous. They're trying to get away, like move over. You do not want to be in the path of this person. Right. And, yeah. and as we, as, um, hey guys, yes. I don't know if there's seven HD can pull up the uh, speed of the suspect. I know he's kind of slowed down as he's boxed in now. Yeah, he's boxed in now, and, and we can see the speeds when he's driving. We do have that. We at one point I saw speeds going up to like 120, 125 on the 105, and then they drop, they dip down. Sometimes um, the speeds aren't totally accurate, but but yes, right now he stopped. He's now picking it, picking yeah. it up. 19 miles an hour right yeah. now, uh, Bruce. Now traffic is moving again and uh, just made an illegal turn. Into a, is that several yeah. police vehicles uh, trailing him. He is now on 11th Avenue, making another left into, into another parking lot with other, um, other, vehicle, other stores, supermarket. Yeah, but he's going. He's going fast. He's just getting out. He's just figuring out where. Where on earth can I get out of here? And boy, oh boy, you see, I, oh. you, you see people there walking to these stores. There oh my goodness. Yeah. He's I not know. stopping. Yeah. Now. Yeah. A parking lot's a very dangerous place for officers, just because, like you said, you have pedestrians walking. People are not expecting the speeds and the maneuvers that the suspect is doing. Yeah, now he's, whew, he's, now he's, he's against really, traffic. yeah, he's, he's, exact, yeah. he's driving in circles right now. And this I'm, is Lawrence Street. Yeah, but doesn't he look like a Giovanni? He's just driving in circles, trying to get, and it's just, the, the radius is getting a little bit moved out, but I'm thinking this driver doesn't necessarily know where they are right now. Um, yeah, it looks like it's, it's hard. He's back in the parking lot. It's hard for us to see where he is. We don't see the vehicle at this, at this time. And we always have to see but the police. But there he is. There he is. And obviously Air 7 yeah, is breaking he, up he, a little bit. He might be looking for an area to dump the vehicle and foot bail. Um, that's always a possibility. And that's where the airship is really important to the uh, pursuing officers. It looks like there was some damage to a front tire is what I'm hearing. Was there a spike strip that we missed? Um, I don't, is, this is not the vehicle, is it? No, I don't, I don't think so. 
Um, no, but it's. I think it's. I think it's. I think the vehicle's to the right. Yeah, it's hard when it's so dark outside. Where the patrol vehicles are, where the patrol cars are, to the mm -hmm. right. Or no, there he is. That looks like. Oh yeah. Is that it? You see the car. The the tires are That's smoking. It. Yeah, you see the smoking. Yeah. So maybe he hit another vehicle. Yeah, or it or. <clears throat> Maybe. Looks like he's, we're getting word he's losing his left front tire. Yeah, may have taken uh, oh, one of these dips. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's driving with a cone underneath. That looks like a cone. Something, but they're, cone. they're not going to, that's, so that's what's probably smoking is, what is, is this cone. Not necessarily it's the tire, but that's kind of scary. because There's something that thing, underneath the vehicle there. Yeah, it looks like an orange cone. You're right, Giovanna. That's exactly what it looks like. Yeah. Now it just has yeah, to. I think he's gone back into the same uh, parking lot again. Um, yeah. He's on the road now. What's is this West 104th Street or maybe not? It is. It is West 104th Street. Um, Driving and fast picking up again. speed again. Yeah, but you know, at not some as point, fast as he was going. That I don't even see the smoke coming out. So maybe he lost that that cone. Maybe it's no. I think out. I still see you still it. See it? It's so hard in in the dark. I know, in the dark. Um, what concerns me is that he is a shooting suspect. So, yeah, you you, you can't really let the could, person he go. He could be armed. He could have a weapon. Yeah. And yeah. now he's coming up on traffic once again. LAPD following close behind Crenshaw Boulevard. He's been here before. Yeah, just keep kind of going into these sort of this this area seems somewhat familiar. Um, but again, you're looking at Air 7 HD. We're so lucky to have this uh, Sky Map 7 because you can see exactly where this car is on Crenshaw Boulevard. Very busy, very busy area of Los Angeles. Now, will this, what do these police cars do? Does, I think it's too, it's too scary to get in front of this person because if they are a shooting suspect, we're and seeing some activity now. Coffee. Well, the police they open, open the door. door, but not the suspect. The no. suspect's just stopped. Mm -hmm. But they're trying. It seems like they're trying to box them in. But that poor car in front of them is probably like thinking, "Oh gosh, I got to get out of here. I got to move. I don't want this behind me." They probably don't even understand that they're pretty pivotal. Yeah, exactly. They may not so even be aware of what's happening. Exactly. Sometimes they don't realize you're just that. So involved in what's happening in your own vehicle or in a conversation or listening to music or whatever. But um, he's now trying to change lanes. Maybe they can box him in now. Is that? I believe he's trying to change lanes. I, I, or maybe they maybe they were trying to communicate with drivers to tell him to get out of the way. I Other don't drivers. know. But the drivers are like, I'm getting out of here. Uh, of course, and you know, you see, it looks like the driver doesn't have his lights on. Yeah, the lights, the headlights. But I think they just, uh, I don't know if they stop. Yeah, they're still out. He's turning. But he knows his car. It is, he, it's Back intentional that he turned the lights off. But you're not going to be getting away at this point. You are very much being followed. And um, it's better just to put your lights on so everybody else is aware that you're coming up from behind so quickly. Yeah, that, that's a tactic we've seen before by suspects to make themselves invisible, so sort to of, sort of speak. However, uh, the helicopter with the uh, night sun and the FLIR is able to track them even with their lights off. Mm -hmm. So he's back on West Century Boulevard. What do you? What can you tell us about the uh, the strategy for um, the 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 officers following him? What are they communicating about? What are they sharing? What are they thinking? What's their goal, other than stopping? Sure. Them? Well, what you have multiple oh, so uh, vehicles in the pursuit. The lead vehicle is not calling the pursuit, meaning they're not putting out traffic conditions, direction of travel. That falls into the helicopter. They're calling the pursuit out. So the pursuing officers, all they have to focus on is the vehicle and staying on top of this pursuit. Yeah, and Bruce, we're, we're sort of, what happens if the LAPD decides to go into tracking mode? Well, they go into tracking mode when it becomes too dangerous for everybody involved. And the belief is that if they go into tracking mode, the suspect will think, oh, the police aren't behind him anymore. They're not pursuing me. So hopefully they will slow down and or stop, and then the officers in the area can swoop on in and take this person into custody. Mm. They've been close enough to this vehicle to, to see the license plate, I'm assuming. Um, would they, uh, he's approaching Normandy Boulevard, would, would they, I mean, would this be a good time to just call mm. it off? 
Or why do you think they're they're continuing um, to follow him? It's clearly point, dangerous. They're still chasing a, yeah, they're still chasing a felony suspect. Uh, he has picked up speeds on certain streets. However, for the most part, he's not driving like he was earlier. Obviously, now you can see that uh, he has picked up speed. But they're, they're going to remain in this pursuit. Yeah, there's like, I, I counted eight, but I, I didn't get to the very end of the line. I've ca counted eight LAPD um, police cruisers behind him. So he's absolutely um, knows that there is a large law enforcement presence on his tail trying to get him to pull over. And again, why people, Bruce? I don't know if you've ever done any sort of interviews with um, these pursuit suspects, but why they, they, they put so many people in danger and why they always try to drive away. Yeah, that's one of the things we do at the end of any pursuit is we talk to the suspects who were driving and they all came pretty much with the same excuse. I was going to thought I could get away. Oh. And they don't. Most they of the time they away. don't, that's no. That's right. Now, we've been following this pursuit in the South L.A. area since... Uh, Right about 25 minutes now, mm -hmm. and this guy just will not quit. He's been driving very fastly, very fast, very unsafe uh, throughout these streets and on the 105 freeway. We saw him head towards Doc Weiler Beach. We saw him make a U-turn back on the 105. He's exited, um, you know, onto side streets and uh, driving against traffic. Uh, we understand that he was involved in an accident and actually hit another vehicle at 95th in Vermont. Someone was injured in that accident. We understand uh, that victim uh, needed an ambulance to be called for treatment. Um, and, and again, it's been now almost a half an hour, and uh, this driver, wanted for an alleged shooting, will not stop. Yeah, I know that we're talking about, um, we are approaching LAX area, but again, there's lots and lots of rules from the FAA for the airspace um, for Air 7 HD, but we are obviously staying on top of this. We're, we're following this person. But again, as they get closer to LAX, that's when we have a harder time staying right above them. But we know that the LAPD is in pursuit. We know when he got on the freeway that the CHP was then also notified. So you have two law enforcement agencies that are, very well aware of this, and I'm sure the L.A. County Sheriff's Department once and Bruce, that that is leads me to another question. Once, you know, this the call comes out that there is a pursuit suspect with a felony uh, stop want. Um, what happens with all the other jurisdictions? Do they all say, OK, well, this is happening near this area where they end up? Everybody comes on to alert to try to apprehend this person. Yeah, great question. What you have is through mutual aid. So the primary agency is LAPD, who is in the pursuit. You have um, the sheriffs who are in the outlying areas, maybe Inglewood PD also. They're all monitoring the pursuit frequency. Their radio center is able to switch it so that everybody can hear what's going on. And they're pursuing, and uh, not pursuing, but they're flooding their areas, possibly paralleling the pursuit. So when this thing comes into their area, it may be handed off. Or maybe there's a terminus of the pursuit and they can all get involved as far as taking the suspect into custody in a coordinated way. All right, Bruce, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, there's a lot happening here. We're trying to um, sort of process some information. We uh, last um, last information we got on his location was westbound Florence. Where is he now? Now he's on Gramercy um, and it. Okay, so he's still on westbound Florence. I just want to make sure our viewers know where he is. If you live in any of these areas, you want to stay inside. That's really important. It is rush hour. It's a lot. There are a lot of vehicles out there, a lot of pedestrian traffic. But if you're watching this or if you know somebody who's out in, the, in this area, you want to tell them to be careful out there and, uh, you know, stay indoors. Um, I believe we see him now against. He's still on westbound Florence. He passed Gramercy a little bit ago. Um, He's approaching Hyde Park or maybe in Hyde Park now. Uh, we can still see the flashing lights of the LAPD following, but I do not see that the, the suspect vehicle um, at this point. Um, does the strategy, Bruce, if you're still with me, does the strategy change at all as it becomes darker? And I mean, what, what are- You know, uh, as it becomes darker and as we are in rush hour, the dangers to, Uninvolved motorists uh, go up, 
the danger for the officers go up because you have dark streets. And that's why you'll see on the police cars, they've turned down their spotlights. They're trying to illuminate themselves as much as possible so that un- uninvolved motorists can see this thing coming and hopefully get out of the way. And and for uh, obviously people who are in their cars now are not going to hear this advice from you, but I would ask you, what would you tell somebody who finds themselves in the middle of a pursuit and they're driving on the road? What is the best advice? You know, I would just tell them, slow down. Do not stop. Can maintain your speed, but at a lower speed ratio so that everybody can go around you. If you suddenly stop, you may cause an accident. If you suddenly pull to the right, the suspect may be going on the right. So it's just a matter of stand your ground and just slow down. All right. That is good to know. And now we are looking. Is this a police helicopter? I believe it likely is. Um, We have lost. The suspect is out of the vehicle and running. Is that correct information I'm getting? Is that correct? Yes, okay. We're getting word that the suspect has uh, exited the vehicle and is now running. We are not seeing that. Um, uh, But we would imagine the LAPD officers are perhaps... uh, Okay, he is not complying, but they are running after the suspect. Um, I wish we could see some of this and and show you what's happening, but it's it's hard uh, to... Probably for our helicopter to to figure out where this is happening. Giovanna, I'm going to just interrupt you for just one second. Ellen Leva here, um, just starting Eyewitness News at 6 p.m. We've been on this pursuit for uh, more than a half hour now. This is the pursuit of a shooting suspect. And right now we understand that that suspect has left his vehicle. He is not complying with officers, but um, as soon as we can get a picture, we will uh, get a better idea of what's happening. But this is according to our desk, and they're getting direct information from the scanners as well, that this has been... Apparently, he's in the middle of the street right now. I don't know a street location. Perhaps I can give that to us. Um, and I am joined by Colleen Sullivan, too. She is miking up right now. It's just one, one of those musical chair days. Uh, David Ono is emceeing a special event tonight, and Mark Brown is off, and it's just... Uh, you know, one of those one of those nights. That's typical Friday night with a full moon and uh, crazy pursuits. Been two pursuits uh, today, just in this hour, of, of eyewitness news. So we're still waiting to see if we can get a picture there. But okay, apparently this uh, suspect is at Crenshaw and 59th, and uh, we know that he is a shooting suspect. I shouldn't say he necessarily, but this suspect is a shooting suspect and obviously um, armed and dangerous and has been traveling at high speeds, erratic speeds, weaving in and out of traffic, at times going the opposite direction, uh, opposite of traffic. But thankfully, he is out of his car, so that uh, t- that's a, a big... Big, no, is, it, um, is it thankful, Ellen? Well, it yeah. is. <laughs> if you're out of enough. your car and you can't run it over somebody, that's one thing. But, you know, he's still an armed suspect. Yeah, so if you do live in this area, where, where can the producer tell us again? Yeah. Is, that, is that Crenshaw, Crenshaw and... Di- 59th and 59th so this is one of those areas though it is a relief that the person stopped because they were driving so erratically and so dangerously and of course you know law enforcement are you know hot on his tail and you can see driving just so quick quickly through all these intersections and trying to weave in but it's also very unsettling knowing that there's someone who may have a gun in your neighborhood who's really trying to get away from uh, law enforcement. So I just always, you know, as you, Ellen, we always kind of think about parents mm-hmm. in that mode of tell your children, L- if you're driving home from work, tell them, lock the doors, close the windows, make sure, and if you're in this area, make sure you uh, also um, lock the windows and the doors. Okay, well, we are getting reports that the suspect climbed up a building and fell off the roof. We don't know how high that building was, and we don't know the condition of the suspect yet, but, um, yeah, that's that's what we're hitting right now. Yeah, that's... that's, Now, Bruce Thomas, are you still with us? Yeah, I am. I was going to say to your your, uh, case in point, you know, when you hear a police helicopter flying low in your neighborhood, everybody wants to come out and see what's going on wrong thing to do the best thing is stay inside lock your doors lock your windows like you said 
uh, you'll know when it's over when you don't hear the helicopter anymore. Oh, well, that is good advice, and we're going to heed that because you are our law enforcement expert. You've been uh, through so many of these pursuits. You know the danger that they can present. We're un understanding that there was a second suspect, and they are right now apprehending that second suspect or in contact with the second suspect. Um, so apparently there were two people in this car. You know, it's so hard right now to see because of, uh, you know, that it, because it's dark outside. So this has been sort of a challenging within the area that this this is, pursuit has been taking place. It's been hard for us to get really good uh, vantage points of um, where where this um, pursuit is taking place. But again, um, we can see that it's Crenshaw Boulevard in the Hyde Park area. But again, what exactly happened if we're learning that one of these uh, suspects may have injured themselves um, by falling off a roof? I mean, I, I, I mean, that's very hard to figure out because we do not, like you said, Ellen, we don't know what kind of building this person was on. Yeah. Yeah. Right, and we do know that the yeah. suspect, oh, go ahead, Bruce. Oh, I was going to say, uh, but you know, the best part of this whole thing is the vehicle is not driving crazily anymore. It is stopped. They've mm -hmm. taken one in custody. If another suspect has fallen off the roof, they're going to take him into custody. Obviously, they won't move him or her until the fire department gets there, but they will search and they will handcuff. And then everything else is just waiting uh, by the numbers. Yeah, absolutely. At least one of the weapons of, of destruction isn't taken away, and that's the car. Don't know the um, situation about the um, what kind of arms he is with or what type of gun he has, but thankfully he is out of that car. And we do know that there was, uh, during this pursuit, someone was injured at uh, 95th in Vermont, and that person um, was hit so hard that it needed an ambulance. And we'll try to figure out what happened to that person as well. I don't believe there are any other um, types of injuries that we know of, not at that least we, not yet. Not that we know of, Ellen, but again, we know that this started as a shooting suspect. We don't know what kind of crime happened before this pursuit ever started and why this suspect is so desperate to get away from law enforcement. So. Um, that's that's a, there's a lot of questions still unanswered. Well, for we're us. hearing some good news that the the two suspects are in custody. This pursuit is over. And Bruce Thomas, as always, we can't thank you enough for your expertise in joining us. So we don't know what we would do without you. But thankfully, uh, this dangerous suspect suspects are off the road, and uh, we're, we give thanks for that. And hopefully, Bruce, there won't be another pursuit tonight, and you can enjoy your Friday evening. <laughs> We will see. Have a good night, ladies. All right. Bye-bye. You too. Thank you so much. All right. We're going to move on with Eyewitness News at 6 o'clock. David Ono's off tonight. And um, roll the sound. Hey, no, 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 no. New at 6, dramatic video showing thieves taking off in a car with stolen mail. All this unfolds.